ready to pop the cork in Champaign, Illinois, home to the Fighting Illini, and the fans clad in orange and blue are more than ready for this one. What an exciting matchup we have in store for you this afternoon, built around the pageantry, tradition, and everything that makes college football great. As we'll see a squad from the back, the Central Michigan Chippewas, taking on a team from the Big Ten, the Illinois Fighting Illini. For EA Sports College Football, Reese Davis with you alongside David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. And guys, can't wait to get this one started. And the Chippewas will kick it away first. He'll start the return inside his five. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes and they'll stop him at the 16. The Fighting Illini offense takes the field and they'll have the ball first. And here he is, one of the best receivers in the game, and he just commands attention, both from the defense and from the fans. Yeah, he's a guy you gotta keep your eye on, and you're gonna see him line up all over the field in this game. He can play in the slot, he can play out wide, he can run the entire gamut in the route tree as well. Really nothing this guy can't do. Illinois lining up quickly. The give to the back. And he knocked him down after he picks up five out to the 34. I like this guy as a running back because he can run between the tackles and he can also go outside. He can really do it all. Halfway there on first down, it's second and five. Back to pass, it's Altmaier. And that's going to fall to the ground incomplete. That was a physical matchup there. Third down coming. My job is to make sure that ball comes loose. And I got to go through that guy, use my shoulder pad, drive my feet, and really, really be physical. Because if he bobbles it at all, or as soon as his hand gets to the ball, you can tell the difference when that body jerks forward and that ball starts to come loose and pop. And they did not let him get to that first down line. It'll bring up a call here. They're strong and they're scrawl. Defensive tackles, they're scrawl. They're such big jokers in the middle where they just lock out those offensive linemen. And running backs, listen, they don't have much of a chance when you got that 300-plus pound guy grabbing you around the shoulder pad. You tend to go to the ground pretty quickly. Makes a catch, wants to make a move upfield. They'll put a stop to that return at about the 37-yard line. So the Central Michigan Chippewas offense has its first opportunity of the day. As we take a look at our impact players for this one, what are you looking for, Jesse, for a guy to make an impact? Well, these are simply put the leaders of this football team, and generally games go how these guys play. If they make plays, then they've got a shot to win this game. No doubt, they got to show up. These are the team leaders. These guys have to play well if they're going to win the football game. Halfway there on first down, it's second and five. He's looking to throw. He finds his man. And they finally haul him down, but not before the good catch and run. Nice job by the receiver there, running the drag route against zone coverage, finding the soft spot, making it easy on his quarterback to get the completion. He turns it upfield, and he moves the sticks. From the 44-yard line, the offense snaps it on first down. He's looking to throw it. Fires to the tight end. They get him down after he makes the catch. Really good concept there to get things going and use the tight end early. Yeah, I mean, just such a great job on first down, setting up an easier second down. Understanding I don't always have to push the ball down the field, but see the tight end, make the throw. No, it's not a big game, but makes life really easy on me on second down. They're looking for an advantage to the right. And he showed himself to be a regular Spinderella, but not a lot of room to run. Let it bust for a moment. Now, third down becomes very manageable. It's not third in eternity. Now the whole play looks short passing game, long passing game, all of it's good. Will they keep it on the ground? 
third again. You're on third down. They'll try to run for it. Open space at the 25. And he found plenty of running room on that one before the defense was finally able to get him down. When the running back gets going and gets ahead of steam like that, it's so hard to get to the ground. That's why you blitz. That's why you bring pressure. That's why you bring more guys in the box so you can get him before he gets going. But once he got going, you could tell it was hard to get a hand on him, hard to get him to the ground. Got it in the middle. It's Davis. They make the stop after the catch and still some work to do to pick up that first down. You see it more and more. Smaller wide receivers, I don't care about their size anymore. I put them in the slot. I let them get a good matchup. They're so quick, people can't get their hands on them. They make plays, and I feed them the football. These are guys that have a lot of catches throughout a season. They'll try the run. They get him on the ground, but not before he gets enough for the first down. I love when players understand situations and they understand where the first down marker is and they understand where I got to get to. A lot of people you'll see run north-south and try to bounce out wide and make big plays. Sometimes it's not about making big plays. Sometimes it's about getting that first down to make sure I get an extra set of downs instead of trying to make those big touchdown runs. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Well, he did everything he could to try to avoid all those defenders, but at the end, it's still a negative play. Tackle for loss. One defender, then the next one. The blitzing guy got a shot at him. Everybody had a shot. It took a while to get him down. Yeah, great effort by that defense. Not quitting on the play. It's been a defensive battle through the first period, and the stats tell that tale. Let's see if the offenses can find a little rhythm as we start the second quarter. Going to work in the red zone, they can't pick up the first down without getting it into the end zone. Give to the running back. Discards a man. Works his way down to the 10-yard line after a pickup of three. Really need to pick up this conversion and avoid having to settle for the field goal. It's a draw. Bulldozes him. And he runs through one tackle and picks up a few. Now on fourth down, here comes the field goal team. From the right hash, this distance makes that angle not quite so severe. No good. The guys after the miss, no change in the score. Well, everybody in the stadium thought that was an automatic three. Not so fast. Bad miss by the kicker. The Illinois offense returns to the field. That last drive fizzled out, Jesse. They had to punt it. Yeah, they did. And David, they're just going to have to do a better job this time around erasing the mental mistakes. And just trying to solve the defensive riddle, understanding what they're trying to do to you and attack it. Got six on first down. Now a lot of options on second and four. To the air, it's Altmaier. He's right on target. Nice pitch and catch there, and they'll have enough for the first down. And this junior loves to show off that big arm. And when you run those drag routes, it just takes a little bit of know-how. And when I say that, the receiver's got to understand, find space. My quarterback's going to find me. He's looking for that space at the same time. Nice throw, nice catch. Way to get the first down. Looking to go up top on first down. Gets it out quickly. And the defense had that one well covered. Just a short game there. And the throw hits route. Nice job getting the ball out of his hands quickly. Wide receiver, quarterback. Nice job being on the same page. Nice completion, nice catch. Illinois right back to the line.
They'll go to the counter. Not a whole lot of progress made there on the short run. Oh, man, there's some big hitting going on in the trenches right now. This defense, they take a lot of pride in stopping the run. Let's keep our eye on them throughout the course of the game and see if they can contain this running attack. They have it at the 43, third and short, trying to avoid making a decision on fourth down. From the gun, wants to pass. He's going up top. Picked off. Looking for more room. And they'll drag him down after a good return on the interception. Defensive backs have tough jobs. I mean, you think about whether you play nickel, whether you play dime, whatever it is, you put more DBs on the field. It's more speed. It's more guys that can cover. But they also got to cover that ground. But to cover the ground and make the pick, a lot of times you don't see that. Superb effort by that guy. First down here with time for maybe one more play until the two-minute warning. The offense showing motion from the tight end, trying to get a read on the D. Off the play fake on first down. Grabbed in the middle. It's Parker. Offense on the move. A big play there. Gets it to the 30. Line gets set, first down. He wants to throw. Fires to the wideout. He caught it. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Central Michigan. And I just love the execution by this offense. Late in the half, man, you want to take the lead. You want to get that momentum on your side, and they do it. They finish it with the passing game. I'll tell you what. Keep that passing game up. You can keep this lead, keep the momentum, and keep putting up numbers. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And the extra point makes it 7-0. This offense prides itself on going after you, and they did with that long touchdown pass to finish off a two-play drive. The kickoff team out there set to boot it away. And he takes this from inside the five. Not a lot of space to be found. Good hustle by the coverage team, and they stop him at the 21. Looks as if we have an injury on that last play, and we'll take a break to check him out. Here comes the Illini offense back onto the field. Boy, they hope this next drive is more productive after throwing a pick last time, Jesse. Yeah, and the coaches did a good job on the sideline there, just talking to the young quarterback and making sure he's able to turn the page and calm him down and go out and refocus this drive. Yeah, and some people do that better than others, but you got to show some trust in him, maybe get the ground game going, help around him a little bit with his system. It's now second down after the short completion. Looking to throw, it's Altmaier. Throws to the wideout. Got him downfield. That is exactly what you're looking for when you talk explosive plays. The defense finally able to make the stop. And you just wonder now, is that the play that's finally going to wake this offense up? They've been sluggish throughout the entire first half, but could that be the thing that finally just gives them a little bit of a jolt and leads them to scoring some points here before this half is over? Trying to find his man on first down. Gets it out fast. A timeout is called as this offense tries to find a way to get more points on the board before the half. They'll line up for a second down play. He's looking to throw. They'll run the screen. He's run out of bounds, but not before. Turning in a big pickup and throwing the sticks for a first down. That is a time-honored way to slow down the rush 
hit him with the screen, and a chunk play. Yeah, such a great job because you're flying up the field to get to the quarterback because everything looks like pass down the field. Let those guys get up the field, throw right behind him. He does a little bit of the rest, making some moves, getting upfield, making the big play. The offense uses a timeout to stop the clock, and they'll get a quick breather. Man down on the play as the officials take a break to let him be checked out. Offense gets set for second down. He's looking to throw. Fires to the middle. It's caught downfield. They get him on the ground after he gets enough to move the sticks. And I love the awareness by the wide receiver on that play because I'm not sure that route was supposed to be that deep. You got to wonder if the receiver decided maybe to adjust the route a little bit to make sure that he got the first down. Finally, this offense starting to shake the cobwebs and get things moving. It's first and ten. Reels it in the end zone. Touchdown, Illinois! Yeah, and the passing game comes through, man, and we need more of that in the second half. An extra point away from tying this football game. We trailed a little bit in the first half. Stayed calm. This passing game can continue to heat up. And look out in the second half. He'll try to tack on one more. Right down the middle. He marks 78 yards down the field. And the finisher, an 18-yard touchdown throw. And we're all square as he's set to kick it away. And it'll be a touchback. The ball will come out to the 25-yard line. Central Michigan has it back. Let's see what the Chippewas can do on offense. They'll come out on this drive and let it rip. Wide open downfield. Good job running that route to get past the sticks because he got nothing after the catch. The offense will have to use its first timeout of the half. They've got it at the 37. It's first and 10. Looking to move it through the air. Got it in the middle, it's Parker. And oh, he was off to the races after the catch, and they finally Time drag him down. The offense wastes no time getting the timeout call. They cross midfield at the 45 with a first and 10. Feeling some heat. Quickly out to the tight end. Quick timeout call by the offense after the play. Well, they're able to find the tight end for an easy completion, but good job tackling, not allowing him to get the first down. Now on second down after the short completion. Dropping back, it's Lavis. Reacted well to the tip, but just quick squeeze the football instead of the turnover. It'll be third down. And you've seen this formula work at all levels of football. You pressure the quarterback, his numbers start to drop. He's not as efficient. Nice job by the defense. They line up, and it is a long way to the sticks from here. On third down, going up top. Just gets rid of it before the heat. Another incompletion on third down. Every defense in the country talks about getting offenses in predictable third and long situations where I can bring on more speedsters, and I know the pass is coming so I can have more success. The Chippewas will punt this one away. He ought to be able to use this first punt to pin him deep. And the punt hits at the six, and they can't down it, and it'll be a touchback. Time dwindling away as they try to put points on the board right before the half. Handoff to the single back. May not be the most memorable play of the day, but it's important as he gets them out to the 25-yard line. We played two quarters here. Time to go to Kevin Connors in our halftime update. Guys, you've been taking in a magnificent scene there today in Champaign. And a compelling first half for a variety of reasons. Yes, there's a substantial lead to talk about. But I think it all starts with this defense that has more than made its share of big plays. If things keep trending in this direction, 
you can bet a ton of those backs and receivers are going to spend a lot of time in ice baths before the end of the day. And with that, let's send it back to the guys at Memorial Stadium. And he'll bring it out of the end zone. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. Central Michigan takes over, and we'll get another look at this offense. First drive of the second half, always fun to watch. You see what type of tweaks were made at the half, especially when you're locked up in a ball game like this one. Yeah, and it's been a good game. I mean, it's been a little bit of back and forth and, and a feeling out process. And now once you get in the second half, who's going to get aggressive, Palmer? Who's going to take some shots, try to make some plays, and really go for it? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I think as play callers right now, you learn a lot about these coaching staffs with respect to who does make the best adjustments. There's a lot of coaches that believe we're just going to be who we are. We're going to keep doing what we do. We're just going to do it better. But then there are others that tweak things a little bit on offense and on defense. We're going to find out here. I'll tell you what, if you want to be overzealous, if you want to be a blitzer all the time, I like running the screen right behind him. Did a great job throwing the screen. Almost broke this one for a long game, but it just keeps the defense a little bit more honest if you want to start putting a lot of pressure. Looking downfield, it's Labus. Let's it fly. A strike downfield. And he's knocked down immediately, but not before he moves the chain. Wow, and what a great job by that quarterback finding his open receiver on third down. You know, guys, one of the most telling stats at the end of the game is third down conversion percentage. If you're a great third down team, it's invaluable to your offensive success, and that's why teams drill third down so much in practice. Pulls it and fires to the left. And a good job of coverage by that defense, just a short pickup. I love this defense's ability to fight off blocks and rally to the football. They do such a great job pursuing that wide receiver screen to only allow a minimal gain and no first down. They'll run this play from the pistol. On second down, looking again to throw. Quick strike complete. He's really close to that first down marker, but they stop him just a bit short. So an example of a tight end doing a little unheralded work to set up a much better third down situation. And I like the QB here. I like the decision where I understand, let's get this football out, let's get some positive yards, and then get the third down. And we can still have a better situation now because we got rid of the football and took the yards that were there. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Well, on that third down play, the offense trying to catch the defense off guard. They're trying to run the quarterback and show them a different element of the defense. They were expecting it. Everybody stayed home. They knew exactly who had the football. They went and got that QB. And the Chippewas line up to cut it away. This will be the second time they've had to kick it away. On the move, looking for a little sliver of hope. Pretty solid coverage there, and they'll stop him at the 26. The Illinois offense returns to the field. The sledding has been tough. Scores have been at a premium, Jesse, and the ball squirted out. It's as if that ball had a magnet going back to the offense. How in the world did they keep it? Man, those are so frustrating when you're a defense and you swarm to the football and you stick the quarterback and you make him cough it up just to have the other team recover it again and you don't get it. Still a good stick, still a good physical play. Keep hitting that quarterback. One back in the backfield. He gets the carry. Crosses the 30 to the 31 and a six-yard pickup. It's a nice game, but the big theme here is they just haven't been able to get the run game going on offense. They've been very one-dimensional. They're just not being physical enough before the attack. After the last run, would you just give it to him again on third down? Back to throw, it's Altmaier. Using the quick game. Good tackle there to stop him short of the first down, and now they have to make a call. 
just not able to shake enough defenders and comes up a little bit short. And I think a lot of times on third down, Reese, you bet on your guy. When you're an offensive guy, you say, okay, he's going to break a tackle. Number he's going to get north and south and somehow get the first down. Nice tackling by the defense, understanding where they had to get to and forcing the fourth down. Wants to bring it back. He gets it up to the 34-yard line before he stopped, and that's where the offense will set up shot. All right, guys, so here's the offense back on the field again. Power football with the run. You want to make sure to maximize those types of runs, and he gets it out to the 41. Coaches always harp about staying ahead of the chains, and when you can run with that type of efficiency on first down, man, you are doing just that. Good spot after that seven-yard pickup on first down. It's second and three. They give it to him again. Stop is made at the 44, but it's a 15-yard gain and a first down. Well, he was able to gash him on that play. You just give this guy one inch, one little crease. He puts his foot in the ground, and he gets north fast. the end of the third quarter and we have a potential classic on our hands all tied up as we take a peek at the stats. This is when winning plays are made and we start right now in the fourth. It's first and ten from the 44-yard line. He's got an open man. Finally run out of bounds, but he has this offense rolling with a first down. Well, the play fake on the RPO bought the receiver some time to work himself open on the route. That was a man-to-man -man coverage on the defense. Nice job by the receiver putting his foot in the ground and separating. The Chippewas come to the line with a fresh set of downs. Off the play fake on first down, wants to throw. Fires deep toward the end zone. Oh, and it's picked off. This could be huge in a tie game. This game right now is hanging in the balance. It's tight. It's close. Tied here in the fourth quarter. One play can change everything, and that was a throw that the quarterback wishes he could have. Here comes the Illini offense back onto the field. And then a low-scoring game like this one, David, every possession is magnified. And I think more than anything, it just gets frustrating. And you got to put that behind you. you got to see what this defense has been doing to be so successful. Power, now use it against them. Yeah, David, I think for a play caller, this is tough, right? It's like you have to have the perfect play on just to get a first down. In these types of games, I think you're just trying to get guys out in space. See if a dude can break a tackle. Maybe that generates an explosive play, and it breaks this trend. Pocket starts to collapse. And the Heat will get home, and the quarterback goes down at the 17. They'll tell you that somebody's always going to pop open, but it didn't happen in time before they got the sack. No, it did not. And you know what? I'm going to remember this. I'm going to remember zone defense. They didn't really have an answer. They weren't ready to get rid of the football. Quarterback hesitated. I got to him and got him on the ground. Might be a good call later on in the game. This defense has kept them backed up. Now one more stop, and they can get off the field on third and long. To the air. It's Altmeyer. And a missed opportunity on third down as the defense knocks it free and fourth down is coming up. This is a point where you just got to be able to focus. And the critical down and distances in this game, like that third down right there, when it's a good throw, you got to make the catch. You've got to be able to make that play. Illinois lining up to punt this one away. Slips through the line. He was able to get that ball up to the 48-yard line before he stopped on the return. Central Michigan has it back. Let's see what the Chippewas can do on offense. 
That last drive was promising for a while, but you just can't mess it up at the end with the pick, Jesse. No, you've got to be able to finish drives, especially in this game, if you're going to win. And, David, they've got to be able to eliminate the mental mistakes. Yeah, and I don't think you get conservative or play it safe. You can trust your guy. I think you put the ball right back in his hands and let him do his thing. It's first and ten from the 38-yard line. He's going to pass. Just too much of a rush, and down goes the quarterback just behind the midfield stripe at the 49. The defense coming up big there, and the sack is great, but the secondary deserves some credit, too. No doubt. When you can cover like that in the secondary and drop back in your zone and only rush a few, and you feel comfortable getting home, and they're going to get to the quarterback, that is a great feeling, and that's fun to be a defensive coordinator calling the plays. Second down now after the sack. Hand off from the gun. Fighting off the defender. They make the stop, but not before he takes a chunk out of what they need to move the sticks. And nice job by the running back finding space, getting downhill, making a good run. Great job finishing his pass. Looking to help the kicker out on third down from here, it would be a 59-yard attempt. Looking to throw, and he needs a chunk play. And they couldn't hold off the heat, and he goes down with the sack. Sometimes you beat your guy and you get sacked so clean. And sometimes, like on this play, the DBs do a great job covering, make the QB hold the football. short distance here toward the sidelines not his best work the Illinois offense returns to the field last time David it was one two three kick the last drive that three and out sometimes that puts your defense in a bad spot and you got to get a drive together here so you don't wear the defense out I just think David too predictable in that last drive they got to do something here to get this defense on the heels my old coach said, you'll never go broke taking a profit. Take what's there, take the positive yards, and never be broke. They'll hurry to the line with the clock still running. Wants to throw. It's Altmaier. Gonna let it fly. And the DB right with him to knock it away. How nice is it as a defense when you've got a corner that can play on an island and be as dominant as this guy has been all game long? Just saw another great example of it right there. Breaking on the ball and knocking it away. Couldn't find his man last time. Now they'll have to convert third and four. From the gun, wants to pass. Got his man quick. He's out of bounds, but not before picking up enough for the first down. It's tough on the defense there. Third down, you're in zone coverage. Everybody's watching the quarterback, and you're trying to make a break on the ball, but he just got it out of his hands too quickly, and the throw was too accurate. Really nothing you can do there, and it's now a fresh set of downs. Illinois coming out with a first and ten. Getting some heat. And the physical play there forces the incompletion on first down. It's really hard to dial up in vertically down the field at this juncture in the game it's the fourth quarter the defense is playing with extra dbs on the field they know you're going to throw it ball falls in the incomplete pass leaves them with second down they want to just keep throwing it fires to the big fella if they're going to win this game in a two-minute situation, it's not just going to be receivers on the outside making plays. they got to use the entire field, so the tight end over the middle of the field is a great weapon at this juncture of the game. IndyCar tempo as they head to the line for this third down play. Clock running. From the gun, wants to pass. Finds his big tight end. Oh, it's loose. 
The defense grabs it, and they're going the other way. And what a big play here, and the return takes it back inside the 25. And that's a huge play by the defense. Great job and great effort getting to the ball carrier and swatting at the football, knocking it out, and then following on it for a massive fumble recovery. Central Michigan takes over, and we'll get another look at this offense. They're in a perfect situation here, David. Just make sure you drain the clock and you have the last play. 100%. You can't lose. That's how you want to do it. Bleed the clock. Get in the position, Jesse, when you kick the field goal and the clock's hit zero. It just comes down to which place that you can run in your sleep here. Easy things you can go out and execute to give your kicker the best shot at winning you this game. Got eight on first down. Now looking at a second and two. Trying to impose their will with the run. And they'll stop him just short of the first down, just inches away from moving the stick off. You gotta call the game the winner right now. Less than a minute to go. A field goal's gonna do it for you. Every time you drop back and throw the ball, you're risking taking a sack. So if you're gonna throw it, the ball's gotta come out quickly. But I think at this juncture, you'd love to be able to run and give your field goal kicker a chance. They'll get the timeout with five seconds remaining to play. Here comes the field goal unit as they'll try to take the three. Going right down the boulevard. They have grabbed the lead in the waning seconds of the game, and they are so, so close to victory. You can't say enough about this kid's poise. You're playing on the road. The crowd's going crazy, willing you to miss this kick, but he stayed dialed in, puts it through the upright, David, to give his team the lead here late. It's crazy, because it's nerve-wracking. You put your body on the line for so long, and then it comes down to a kick, and he has to be clutch in a hostile environment, and he comes through for his squad. That late clutch Number field goal put them on top. They can almost taste off. victory if they can keep them from scoring the tie or win the game. But see what he can get done from inside his own 15. And the return man reaches the end of the line, and down he goes. Central Michigan. 